Y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life. And we're back. Mama, I made it. I'm proud to say July will make seven years I've been home. I've never stayed free for seven years, five years, a year since the first time that I ever found myself in trouble. Since being just a young man, a young boy, after that first time, it was just an endless cycle of going in and out, in and out. So many different institutions, detention centers, jails, that I'm sure I've forgotten some by now. So many different cells, cellmates. So many different days, months, years. So many different stories to tell. Everybody's not going to make it. Everybody didn't make it. Today, I'm going to touch on friends of mine that are currently incarcerated, the amount of time they're doing, how I met them, and what will lead them to getting out of prison and going back to prison. You think you know somebody when in reality, you only know what they let you know about them. They only reveal what they want you to know. Some of the things I found out about some of these guys ain't cool, but they all have one thing in common. They couldn't make it out here. They weren't ready for change. They weren't willing to change. They got out and they did the same thing they had always done, which gave them the same results they had always got. I'm going to stay where I'm at. I'm going to keep raising my kids, running my construction company. I'm going to keep entertaining y'all with YouTube and living my best life. Let's live life. So that's what it is today. I'm going to speak on those that didn't make it. Those that are locked back up with crazy numbers. Y'all know I done seen it. Y'all know I done lived it. So let's relive it. So with the time being locked up, on several occasions I had people come up and say, Hey, such and such is looking for you. He says he knows you. Such and such knows your people. Hey, this dude's trying to get in touch with you, man. Is, is it cool if I, I point you out to him or point him out to you? Pretty common thing when you do a, a good stretch. I'm on the yard, walking the yard. Years and years ago, man. It was like 2010. And a guy comes up to me and goes, Hey, it's a dude on the yard asking about you, Jay. I said, where was he asking? He's like, just trying to find out who you are. He says he's related to you. Say so he's related to me. He was like, yeah. I was like, who is it? And he was like, dude over there. I said, all right, I'll, I'll handle it. Let me check him out, man. I go over, I push up on dude. I said, what's up, man? You looking for me? He was like, who are you? I said, I'm Jay. He was like, yeah, yeah, I know your people. I said, you know my people? He's like, yeah, I know your people. I know your baby mama. I said, yeah. He's like, everybody thinks we're related. I said, okay. I said, well, what's up, man? He was like, nothing. That was my introduction, my introduction to Mike Powell. Mike Powell was a street dude. No way around that. Straight street dude. Heavily tatted. Body tatted. Face tattoos. Head tattoos. I don't think much about Mike when I first meet him. You know what I mean? I'm I'm into my own thing. I ain't really looking to have no new friends, make no new friends. Just because you know some of the people I know, to me, that don't mean shit. That don't validate you're a good person. It don't validate you're solid. It don't validate that me and you are the same at all. Just because somebody else chose to mess with you don't mean that we're alike. Over time, Mike starts to grow on me. I'd see him on the yard with his homeboy every day walking. And dude he would walk with was a solid dude. So we, over over a course of months, we start talking here and, here and there more and more. He knows my brothers, knows my baby mama, knows a bunch of different dudes I know, females I know. Ran with a lot of the same people I ran with when he was out on the streets. By now, I've been locked up. When I met him, I'd already been locked up over five years. He wasn't doing a lot of time. I can't remember exactly how much time he was doing, but I think he was doing like six, seven years. Me and Mike would occasionally smoke weed. Every now and then, you know, he'd come up with some weed. Jay, what's up? Walk with me. Smoke with me. 
You know what I mean? I, I smoke with me, joke with me. I'm like, all right. So I walk laps with him. We puff on the weed, walking the, the track in the prison, right? Walking on the yard, just dusty ass. Long ass track. One and a half laps around this track is a mile. We build. He doesn't sleep in the same pod as me. He lives in the same building as me, but he sleeps in a pod above mine. Mike, I knew was out there. And let me get into why I can tell you he was out there. Mike goes and gets his head tattooed. And I don't know if you can see in the pictures, but Mike's entire head is tattooed. He's got clowns all over his head. He's got clowns, evil looking clowns, smoking big cigars. These clowns with these crazy looks and laughs on their face. And smiles that are all just wicked and demonic, like just crazy, insane looking clouds tattooed over his head, right? Mike comes in the chow hall one day, and I'm sitting there with my homeboys and them at the table eating. And this man's head is purple. And I mean purple from where he had just got all of this back here tattooed, all of this up here tattooed. His head is freshly shaved, and his head is purple from all the like trauma from the tattoos on his head, right? Guard sees him, walks right up to him. Let me see your head. Mike leans forward and shows him like he would be showing somebody in the streets. Like no fear of the fact that he's about to get, uh, you know, an institutional charge and lose his good time and his release date's going to change. Mike shows him. He said, give me your ID. Mike's like, let me get my tray because you got to scan your ID to get your tray. That way they make sure you don't steal trays. Mike scans his ID, gets his tray, gives the guard his ID. He's like, man, I don't give a fuck. I'm looking at Mike like, man, you a wild dude, right? He comes over. One of my homeboys gets up and leaves out and goes back to his building. Mike sits down at the table. And I'm just looking at him. I said, man, you wild, dude. Like, why would you come in the chow hall knowing that they're going to see your head? I don't give a fuck about none of that shit, man. I'm going to do what I do. Like, so what? You know what I mean? Stupid. I'm already locked up. Who cares if they take... 42 days, 52 days off my sentence. All right, whatever, gangster, right? Mike comes to me another time, and he tells me, look, man, I'm about to get to rumbling with dude upstairs in my pod. And he tells me who the dude is, and I'm like, yo, you don't want to, like, that's not somebody you want to bump with, homeboy. Like, He's like, what you mean I don't want to bump with? Like, I'm going I'm to rumble him. I see, I'm telling you, like, I respect the fact you're saying you're going to rumble him and all. That's all good, but dude's going to bust your ass up. Like, this dude he's fighting ain't no slouch. This dude is a, a trained fighter. Real quiet, real hum, uh, humble, you know, dude. But dude is, like, not with that bullshit. And I've seen him fight in the past. And every time I saw this dude fight, whoever he fought came out the situation looking like they'd had the shit beat out of him. him he owes Mike some money. For some tattoos and I told Mike because me and Matt, Mike both tattooed I told Mike I said Mike because he said hey on store day this person owes me this person owes me this person owes me I said you got to stop doing that man he was like what's up I said letting people owe you you don't let nobody owe you you act like these dudes in here are strapped with morals and they got you know all these different characteristics to make you think you can trust them what are you gonna do if one of these dudes looks at you and says you know what I mean? It just flips the bird in your face and says, I'm not paying you. I'm going to fight. I said, all right, so you put yourself in a situation where you got to fight and you're still not going to get paid unless after you fight him, you go and rob him. And that's if you win. So you might not get paid and get beat up. I said, man, you got to make these dudes pay you up front. I said, when, when I do tattoos, I either make the guys send the money to my books, send money off of their books to my people, or bring the commissary right to me right then and there there will be no i pay you when i pay you or i pay you on store day you didn't wait for the tattoo i'm not waiting on my money mike doesn't heed my advice old boy gets a tattoo from mike and mike a tattoo like you know that's what he that that was his hustle dude don't pay mike mike tells me i'm a rumbling i said all right man Later that evening, I run into somebody else on the rec yard. Mike ain't there on the rec yard. And they're like, yo, your homeboy and, and old boy got it in, man. Like, they was in the cell thumping earlier, rumbling. I see it. What happened with that? He was like, everything's all right. You know what I mean? But your homeboy got a massive knot on the back of his jaw where he had, a, I guess, one of his glands or a blood vessel busted when dude hit him. 
and it causes huge like knot, like half an apple on the side of his, you know, back here. And I'm like, ah, man. He's like, yeah, he can't come out to sell this shit. He's going to hold his jaw is messed up, right? So in the rec yard, you could yell up. The building's four stories high. You could yell up to the, you know, very top windows. So I'm outside in the rec yard. And I'm like, oh, Mike, Mike. I'm yelling up to his building, to the top of his, the building, right, to his window. And he comes to the window. He's like, what's up? I said, why you ain't come outside? He was like, shit, I got some stuff to do, man. I got some tattoos to do and stuff. I'm busy. I smell, I heard you got your shit messed up. He was like, nah, it ain't even like that. Dude got a lucky one in. I'm good, though. And I can hear in the way he's talking that his mouth is messed up, right? He said, look, I'm going to fuck with you, though. I'll be out in the morning. I said, all right, man, I'll catch you in the morning, wreck, man. That morning, he comes out, and he's got a towel around his neck, and he's kind of holding it like this so that when he pulls it forward, the sides of the towel block the sides of his cheeks so the guard can't see the side of his face is messed up. He comes out, and I'm like, go ahead, move the towel, man. I done heard. Let me see. So he moves the towel, and I'm like, oh, shit, that looks painful. Like, dude, you look like you got a tumor on the side of your face. Like, your face is trying to grow another head. He's like, man, that shit ain't even funny. Like, dude caught me on a lucky jump, man. He's like, we rumbled. Like, he knows I ain't no bitch. You know what I mean? He's like, and he's going to pay me. I'm like, all right, sure you're right. He'll mess your jaw up like that. That dude ain't paying you. Dude paid Mike, right? Mike got his respect. On several other occasions, Mike would rumble. Somebody wanted it, Mike would get down with him. He'd throw hands with him. A majority of times it was, you know, most of the white dudes wasn't, wasn't saying shit to Mike because they knew he would fight. And they wasn't really, a lot of white dudes are just not built like that. That's the facts of the matter. People can get mad. I'm not bashing my own race. I'm just telling you what it is. A large majority of the white dudes were not getting down like that. There were some solid dudes. There was a handful that would didn't give a shit who it was, would rumble. But the everyday average dude that was in there that was white wasn't going to fight. You know what I mean? So it seemed like every time Mike got to rumbling, he was rumbling with a black dude. Rumbling with a black dude. To the point, I'm starting to look. I'm like, Mike, why you keep beefing? With, like, why you always beefing with black dudes? Man, you don't never get to fight with nobody. No Spanish dudes. No white dudes. He's like, does nobody else like these other dudes ain't trying to rumble? And I got to thinking about it. And I'm like, he's right. And I also knew the circle he kept. He didn't mess with no racist dudes, no Aryans, no nothing like that. Majority of his homeboys were black. And there was a couple white dudes he messed with, right? Comes time for me to get shipped. I tell Mike that day on the yard, I said, look, man, I'm gone tomorrow. They told me I was shipping me, so I'm gone. He was like, that's what's up. I'm going to fuck with you, man. I'm going to holler at you when you get out, right? I said, all right. So Mike and me get out. Roughly, I want to say around the same time, Mike might have got out a couple months after me. I get a call out the blue one day. I'm guessing my baby mama might have got my number somehow. I gave it to him or somebody else got my number and gave it to him. And he hits me up. What's up, man? So who's this? It's Mike. Mike who? Mike Powell. I said, oh, what's up? What's up, homeboy? He's like, I ain't doing shit, man. I'm out. I said, that's good. I mean, everything all right? He was like, nah, not really, man. The, the P.O.'s on my ass. I said, why the P.O. on your ass? Man, I keep giving up dirties, man. I said, that dirty is a dirty urine. He's failing his urinalysis. I said, man, you can't be out here getting high, Mike. Yeah, well, what's up, man? You trying to do this? I, you know I'll be tattooing. I said, yeah, me too. He was like, you trying to do this tattoo party? You trying to get up? We're going to do this tattoo party. And uh, I got a tattoo party set up. We'll make plenty of bread, you know? He's like, but I can't do all the tattoos by myself. He's like, it's just too many people. You're talking 25, 30 people that want to, you know, get tatted up. He's like, we can make a couple thousand dollars a piece tonight. I said, nah, man. Just based on who I know, knew Mike to be in prison, I knew it wasn't a good look. I knew that he just told me. He's failing all his piss tests. He's pissing hot. The P.O. is on his ass. I should probably leave Mike alone. Not somebody with me trying to do right in life that I want to put myself around. I said, nah, man, I already got a bunch of tattoo uh, appointments set up. I got a couple tattoo parties myself I got to do. I'm going to pass on it, man. You sure? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm good. I'm good. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't want no problems, man. I don't want no parts of what you got going on, like. You sound like you can get yourself jammed up, Mike. That's not my path, man. All right, man, whatever, man. If you change your mind, hit me up. I said, all right. I don't change my mind. A little bit of time goes by. A couple months go by. Mike hits me up. I said, what's up? He said, man, 
I'm in trouble. I said, well, what's wrong? He was like, I live in these apartments, man, out here in Hopewell. He said, it's a dude out here that keeps talking shit. I said, all right, so ain't a whole lot to that. Like, if he keeps talking shit, either, you know, try to avoid dude or go ahead and fight if that's what y'all got to do. I'm not trying to tell you to get yourself in trouble, man, but you got to do what you got to do or dude ain't going to stop. You already know this. He's like, yeah, dude be trying to holler at my girl and makes little slick comments. I said, all right, so uh, what's good then? He was like, I've already handled the situation. That's why I said I'm in trouble. I said, well, what happened? He was like, you're not going to believe me. I said, like, why wouldn't I believe you? He was like, listen, man. He was like, dude walked up on me talking shit. And he's like, and I punched this dude in the side of his eye and his temple area. He's like, and when I did, his eyeball popped out. He's like, it didn't come all the way out, but it popped loose from the socket and was like bulged out of his head. I said, oh, man, you're going to prison forever. You done knock somebody's eyeball out. He was like, yeah, man, I'm on the run. I got warrants. Like, I ain't going to the P.O. no more. He said, man, I pissed for everything you could imagine from pills, dope, coke, weed. Like, if it's a drug that I can get my hands on, I done pissed hot for it. So I'd already bucked on the probation. He was like, now I done knocked dude's eye out. So they want me for that. I said, look, man, just, uh, I mean, they going to catch you, so be safe. That's all I can tell you. Like, I'm not kicking it with dude. I'm not going around, dude. I've told y'all. I cut that type of stuff off when I came home. Had I, we probably wouldn't be having this conversation. Watching the news one day at home in the comfort of my house, a free man, big free, super free, love being free. Mike's face pops across TV. Man wanted in string of home invasions in Sussex County. One man caught, two men still on the run. They go into details. Mike and some of his homeboys have been doing these home evasions. I'm just going to jump out there and take a guess. At this point, it was to feed an addiction. With him telling me he was on all these different drugs, doing all these different drugs. Drug dealers don't give drugs away. They sell them. If you're on the run and you're wanted, he wasn't known for working a job. There ain't but a couple different ways you can get money. Tattooing being one of them, but with your face being plastered everywhere, you ain't going to be able to tattoo because somebody's going to cash in on that $1,000 reward for your ass. They say that Mike, two other guys, did a home invasion on his house. The problem was there was a kid in the house when they kicked the door in. I believe the daughter was, the little girl was like nine years old, maybe 11, I'm going to say nine. She ran to the back bedroom with the phone, hid underneath the bed in the house, and called the police as these three guys, Mike included, were going through the house, rummaging the house they just kicked the door in on. The cops come to the house, are on the phone with the little girl, tell her to come to the bedroom window quietly, open the window so we can get you out the house. Y'all can pull this up and read all this. She goes to the window. The cops help the little girl out the window. Now there's nobody else in the house except the three guys that kicked the door and they're in the house, right? Somehow, some way, Mike gets up out the house. There's cops everywhere. He gets out the house, takes them on a foot chase. Is picked up by somebody further away. One of the dudes gets caught on the scene. I don't know if he told, but reading the reports kind of sounds like he led the police to, to who else was involved. Mike would go on to be captured. Mike would go on to be sentenced. 19 years he was given. Mike's a couple years younger than me. Didn't make it a whole year on the streets. I talked to him a couple years back. He was at the same prison as my younger brother. My younger brother. My brother was like, hey, somebody was talk to you. My brother's done time with a lot of different dudes that I did time with, dudes I knew from the streets. I said, what's up, man? He was like, this Mike. As soon as he said his name, I knew who it was. I said, oh, shit. I said, man, you like a celebrity. I saw you on the news. He was like, yeah, man. What's up with you, though? I said, bro, you real nonchalant. Like, I gave you 19 years. He was like, yeah, that shit ain't about nothing, though, man. You already know how we do. And I'm thinking to myself, nah, how you do, homeboy. That ain't how I do. So what's up with you? I said, I ain't doing nothing, man. What's up with you? He was like, shit, sitting and receiving, man. Waiting to get sent off to wherever I'm going to go. 
So yeah, well, I mean, be easy, bro. Take care of yourself in there. You know what I mean? Like, I knew this was going to end bad for you, man. I ain't want you to feel. He's like, nah, I understand why you ain't kicking with me, man. I understand why you ain't come around me. And uh, I appreciate it. Like, you smarter, obviously. You ain't told no lie. I pulled up his information and looked him up. He's currently at Keene Mountain, which means either he did something violent to get sent up there. He got caught with a knife. That type of thing. Keene Mountain is a higher level prison way out in the middle of nowhere where they send you once you've been deemed unfit to be in the other prisons that are, you know, filled with other inmates. Yeah, man, he's uh, set to come home. I believe his release date is uh, October 3031. And he has been locked up now since 2016. Released 2015. Back with the fresh 19 years. Some dudes ain't gonna get it until it's too late. And some dudes just don't ever get it. About the noise, I'm gonna speak a little louder. Homers ain't known to be quiet. So when I'm young, man, I got this homeboy. Because of the, the nature of the stuff, I'm gonna leave his full name out of it. But I had a homeboy, K Rock. A lot of people seeing this are gonna know who K Rock is immediately. We grew up together, my dude. Got into a lot of fights, a lot of rumbles. We had disagreements. This is my friend, man. We went to high school together. Was in these streets together. Juveniles drinking Mad Dog 2020. 40s of old English. Just doing what we did at that age. Smoking blunts all day, every day. Selling weed, selling drugs. Early on, K-Rock hadn't been in no trouble. Somehow or another, he was one of us and as a team, kept his ass out of trouble. K-Rock, right before he turns 19, gets in some trouble. Gets locked up on some bullshit. Straight bullshit charges and everybody that knows K-Rock or knows the situation, knows exactly what I'm talking about. They were trumped up bullshit charges. When he comes out of jail a year later, He's a much darker version. When I mean darker, I mean like mentally. Much darker version of who he used to be. He was already known for fighting in the streets. He was already known if you wanted to rumble, he'd rumble you. But now he's way worse. Now he's a criminal. He picked up things along the way in jail, fought in jail. He's not the same. His brother ends up getting killed by the the police here, here in Virginia, his brother's got a really bad custody battle going on with his wife at the time. The cops come to take the three kids from him to give to the wife. He refuses, bangs out with the cops. This man that owned the company, loved his kids, never been in trouble. His brother Michael was killed by the cops. K-Rock starts to spiral out of control, man. Just downward from there. He meets a girl. I believe he got himself in a little bit more trouble, gets out of jail, meets a girl, has a kid, gets married. To us, it all appears, he's turning his life around. Like, all right, good, man, dude's finally starting to get it. We ain't getting it at the time. We're still heavy in the streets. But K-Rock's starting to understand now that, you know, this, is, this ain't what it is. He can't do this. His first kid is born, married, got an apartment. I end up moving in there. I was, you know, in and out of, of jail at this point. I stayed with him for a couple months. Then boom, I bounce, get my own place. I started hearing in the streets, I ain't seen K-Rock in four or five months now. I started hearing in the streets that he's getting high and that he's left his wife and his kid and that his wife wouldn't let him come back home and was divorcing him and took the kid. I'm starting to hear that he's getting high. You know, he's playing hardball. No offense to you, K-Rock, but he started, you know, smoking crack. Liked it. 
lot of dudes who smoked crack back then. Wasn't no big deal. Everybody had turned to heroin and started messing with the needle yet. I don't think he ever got into that phase. I didn't deal with him a lot after what I'm about to tell y'all. But he gets real heavy into the whole drug scene, crime scene. It comes with being a drug addict. He comes by the house one day. We're out front. Drinking 40, smoking blunts, a couple of us. And he's got this new girl he's messing with. Asked me if I'm down to hit a lick. Lick being a robbery, kick somebody's door in, steal something, get some money illegally. I said, what you talking about? Like before I agree to do anything, I need to know what we're talking about. And he's talking about robbing some of these, these drug dealers and these dope boys around the way where we live at. And he pulls out this big black rubber grip handle, snub nose 357 Taurus. I said, nah, I'm good. And the reason I said, nah, I'm good is A, he, I know he's getting high and he's not in his right mind. And B, the dudes he wants to jack and rob, I know the dudes. Nah, I do business with these dudes. Nah, I'm not about to do all that. Even though they say there's no honor amongst thieves, the honor amongst criminals, I deal with these dudes and I know this ain't the type of smoke we want. These ain't the people we want to rob because after we do this, it ain't going to be no everything's okay. These dudes are coming back and it's going to end with somebody getting killed. They're not just going to let it go. I'm not about to, you know, I was doing the robberies at that time, robbing drug, drug dealers and stuff like that. I'm not going to lie. But I'm not about to go into a situation knowing that chances are it's going to lead me to get killed or I'm going to have to kill one of them to keep me from getting killed once this is all over. So I turn it down. Nah, okay, rock I ain't messing with it. Nah, that's what it is, whatever. You know what I mean? He dips out. Some more time passes. I don't hear much about him. Just like the first dude. I start to hear on the news. I start to hear through people. Yo, K-Rock's locked up. I said, what? Like, yeah, man, he's locked up. I said, what'd he do? Like, what'd he do? He went down to Williamsburg with that same girl he was with that day. Got a hotel room. Robbing people. All the way from here to Williamsburg. This is all common knowledge. You know what I mean? He played out. Police know all this. So, miss me with that. You telling shit. He played. He knows. He told him, yeah, y'all got me. He's in this hotel room with this girl down there in Williamsburg. Runs out of money. He's like, shh. Need to jack somebody. Goes across the street, robs the convenience store right across the street from the hotel he's staying in. Runs out, hides for a little bit. Police come, they're investigating. A lot of police are at the, you know, the convenience store investigating. He comes out of his hiding spot, runs across the street back to the hotel. The people in the convenience store that just got robbed see him, tell the cops, that's the guy right there. They watch him go in the room, go over there, make entry, positive ID, he gets caught. He's taken, sentenced, sent off to prison for 10 years for this robbery. I would hear from other dudes while I was in prison. We was in prison at the same time. He didn't get locked up long before me. But your homeboy snapped. I'm like, yeah, what's up with him? He like, man, he's going in. Like, he's smashing dudes out, beating dudes' asses in there. Like, he done made his way up to a higher level prison. He's up way up in the mountains, which means just like I told you, the last guy, he's putting in work and he's doing it in a manner that he's really not trying to get away with it. Don't care if the guards catch him. He's hurting dudes. He would go on to get released after doing his time. And since his release, been back to prison a whole bunch of times, man. In and out. Now what I'm about to show you right now is a picture of K-Rock when he was arrested for the first time. See that? That was him when he fell at 19 years old.
see this picture here? That picture there is what he looked like upon being released after 10 years. This is, he's about a year older than me. And this picture you're looking at is a couple years old. This is what prison can do to you. This is how hard prison can be on certain guys that just can't get it right. I'd like to say that he got out and he got it all together and he figured life out. But he didn't. The last I'd heard, I don't know if it's true or not, somebody had told me he converted to being Muslim, that he had found Allah, and that he was now living a better life. Me and my point of views on religion, I don't care if it's Jesus, if it's God, if it's Allah, if it's Buddha. I don't care if you pray to a dirty sock. If whatever you put your faith in is positive, it helps you become a better person, and I'm all for it. But I do know that up until, you know, a couple years back, all I heard was he's back in prison. He's back in prison. He's back in prison. It's crazy when you think about it. When y'all looked at those two pictures, that that man didn't even resemble who he once was. What I want y'all to take from this, and I always try to leave y'all with something positive. What I want you to get out of this is take the bad things that happen to you in life and let them be the things that motivate and change you for the better. We get so stuck on the negative and the bad things we've been through that we stop looking at all the blessings that lay ahead of us. The fact that we have another chance to go home. The fact that, you know, we can mend these broken bridges and rebuild with our children. No, he'll never get his wife back. But after coming out of prison, he had the opportunity to go on, link up with his son, and be a father. A lot of guys get stuck in this rut of confinement and incarceration and the streets and having to live up to a name they built while they were incarcerated. And it's all bullshit. The macho facade, the putting on a mask to be somebody that you're not. Or they're getting caught up in feeling like that's who you are, when in reality, it's not. I could have came out of prison, tried to wear my incarceration like a badge, walked around with my chest poked out. Look at me, I just got out of prison, I'm a tough guy. It's not what I did. I came out of prison and said, look at me, I made it home. I did my time. I'm now a father, a business owner. I'm successful and everything I put my mind to and I put my grind to because I learned from my past that I don't want to be the person I once was. Most guys can't do that. I empower you. I ask you to let the things in life that are holding you back, the things that make you what you think you've got to be, let those same things push and make you who you should be. It's crazy, man. Crazy, crazy world we live in. But anyway, these jails, detention centers, institutions, facilities, they're all just crazier worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. Just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life to all my real ones. And there are some real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. And y'all know how we do. Salute.